Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. When the walls came and tumbling down, you may talk about your kings of Gideon, talk about your men of Saul. But none like good old Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. That morning, Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho. When the walls came and tumbled in town. Right up to the walls of Jericho, he marched with a spear in hand. Go blow that ram horn, Joshua cried, cause the battle is in my hand. Then the lamb ram sheep horn begins to blow, and the trumpets begin to sound. And Joshua commanded the children to shout. But there were no walls to come tumbling down. Joshua didn't fight the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua didn't fight the battle of Jericho, no walls came tumbling down. Hello and welcome. Today, we're looking at a video that promises to bring us proof of God from a recent find in Jericho. So what did they find? The original stone tablets that God wrote? Did Jesus return to Jericho and this YouTuber found him? Let's take a look. Believers say there is no scientific proof that God doesn't exist. Atheists say that there is no scientific proof that he does. Believers say that the Bible proves God's existence, whereas atheists say that the Bible is just a bunch of fictional stories. And yet, whilst there is no actual scientific proof that the stories in the Bible are indeed false, archaeologists are constantly finding proof that some are actually true. So we are going to look at an archaeological find, and from that, conclude that God is real? First, archaeology can't even prove the truth of the stories, only that the places and people in the stories are real. The people and places in the stories don't prove the stories themselves are real, any more than Greece and Mount Olympus being real places and the people of Athens being real people proves the stories of Greek mythology. But even if there was a find to actually prove that there was a battle of Jericho and that the Hebrew people conquered that city, that still wouldn't prove that there was a God involved in the battle. So let's see what this recent find is that will prove that there really was a God involved in the battle of Jericho. In 1951... Wait, did I hear that correctly? In 1951... I'm told that the 1980s is not recent, even though it seems like a short time ago to me. But really, dude, the 1950s is a recent discovery? How is it that proof of God was discovered in Jericho 70 years ago, but we're just finding out about it now? An archaeologist, Dame Kathleen Kenyon, was called into the coast of the Dead Sea to give her opinion on a site that possibly could be the famous city of Jericho. What are we discovering now about what Kathleen Kenyon uncovered then? Unlike other archaeological dig sites that are located close to water sources that have now either dried up or have become flooded, the underground water supplies of Jericho had continued feeding the city up to this day. The site Kathleen was sent to inspect is known today as Tel Jericho. After some initial digging and evaluation, Kathleen decided that there was simply not enough evidence to either disprove or confirm confirm that this was indeed the fabled walled city of Jericho. So Kathleen called in a team to continue the dig. Kathleen and her team continued to dig for another six years. So this was discovered no later than 1956. So how is this recent? 
Maybe a new testing method has provided us new information on what she found there back in the 50s? And what they found would change everything. The Jericho City site had initially been dated to around 4000 BC. This surprised most scholars at the time because according to them, the widespread use of agriculture and the domestication of animals had only occurred around a thousand years earlier. Kathleen and her team had discovered that the site of Jericho had been built and rebuilt on top of itself over and over and that the site had been inhabited from as early as 9400 BC. This whole video is under six minutes. We're one third of the way through and God hasn't even been mentioned yet. All we have is that the city of Jericho changed when historians date the first major city to as this one existed far earlier than historians realize before this find. Don't get me wrong. This is a significant find with tremendous historical value. But what we haven't heard is what this has to do with God and how this is supposed to prove the existence of God. Kathleen had found that over 10,000 years ago, shortly after the Ice Age had passed, but woolly mammoths still existed when the majority of mankind was a nomadic race of small clans of hunters and gatherers living off the land and striving for survival, the people of Jericho had formed one of the first mass groupings of different clans to create a bustling city about the size of Washington Square Park, which is the first known settlement to have been surrounded by walls. In Inside the walls of Jericho, Kathleen uncovered something even more surprising. Again, she made a landmark historical find. She even changed the way archaeological digs are done, developing new techniques, according to some other articles that I read about her. But still, nothing about God. A tower nearly 30 foot tall and that was built around 8000 BC. The majority of Jericho's first people lived in mud houses around 14 foot in diameter. These conical structures resembled mud teepees and had sunken mud plaster floors. Each house also had its own area for storing grain. After an unknown event, Jericho's walls were destroyed. Note that he gives us the approximate dates for the earliest events but not for when these walls were supposed to be destroyed and a new civilization being built on top of the old one. Is this supposed to have occurred at the time of the flood? Is the flood supposed to have destroyed the walls and a new people group is supposed to have moved in after the Tower of Babel? Or is this supposed to be Joshua fighting the Battle of Jericho? Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Not yet, Robin. We'll get to that. And the Israelites are moving in here? Or could this have been an earthquake that had nothing to do with God in the Bible at all? He really doesn't give us any details here and its population was replaced by a different group of people. These people also built their houses from mud, but they used mud bricks. This made their houses and, of course, Jericho's walls stronger and more advanced. These people were also more numerous than their predecessors, growing to a population of approximately 2,000. After around 1,500 years, disaster struck and... He gives us that this is supposed to be 1,500 years after the new civilization was built, but... He gives us no dates for the new civilization. 1,500 years later is meaningless when you don't tell us 1,500 years after what or when. For some reason, all signs of life in Jericho and the surrounding areas completely disappear. This event, known as the Great Decline, is thought to have been when the Noah's Ark mass flooding event could have occurred. Finally, some context. Obviously, whoever made this isn't a young earther, as he gives dates that predate the creation of the earth, if that was supposed to be only 6,000 years ago. This guy obviously takes the Bible as being literal history. So if Jericho existed at 9,000 BCE, when was the Garden of Eden? Maybe he believes the genealogy in Genesis is partial, leaving out some of the people so that Eden was longer than 6,000 years ago, and we just don't know how long ago it was. For around 2,000 years, Jericho then remained uninhabited until the Copper Age. So if Jericho was empty from the time of the flood, about 2450 BCE, for two millennia, 
that would be to about 450 BCE. But this isn't the time of the Copper Age. The Bronze Age began in this region around 3300 BCE, even before the Flood. Since this guy puts the time of the Flood so far off from most of his contemporaries, a dateline for when all of this he thinks is happening would really be helpful. But it wasn't until the early Bronze Age that Jericho built its walls once more. Around 2600 BC, the population of Jericho had reached its highest yet, and just 200 years later, an impressive palace complex was built. Then in 2300 BC, for some reason, whether it was war, disease, famine, or environmental catastrophe, the city of Jericho collapsed once more. And it wouldn't be for another 300 years until the city rose again from its ashes. Between between 2000 and 1550 BC, the city of Jericho grew tremendously. So we had flourishing in 2600, a new palace complex built in 2400, and another annihilation in 2300, and it stays empty for 300 years until 2000 BCE, and then is rebuilt again. And now it flourishes again for 500 years evidence of the possible emergence of nobility and royalty begins to appear and the walls of Jericho become more advanced with the addition of ditches and rectangular towers along its length. Now we have another set of walls, but still no God. According to the Bible, around 1400 BC, Joshua and his army of Israelites attacked Jericho. Finally, Joshua arrives in 1400 BCE walking around its walls once a day until the seventh day when they circled seven times, blew their trumpets, shouted, and the walls came tumbling down. They then took all the bronze, iron, silver, and gold and burnt the rest. Joshua then exclaimed, Cursed before the Lord is the one who undertakes to rebuild this city, Jericho. On the dig site, Kathleen found that a dramatic event had indeed caused the walls of Jericho to fall and the city to burn. Kathleen Kenyon found evidence that something caused which set of walls to fall? You mentioned that there were a few different wall sets built at different times. Even your diagram shows different sets of walls being built in slightly different places. Also when? When does she say the evidence of a catastrophic event points to? And what? What does she say caused the walls to fall? You really are sketchy with the details in what is supposed to be proof of the greatest question of the universe. Is there a God? And Kathleen couldn't find any metallic objects to be able to date the event, but the pottery she did find placed the time of this disaster at 1550 BC. Wait a minute. Kathleen Kenyon put the time of this disaster at 1550 BC? That's 150 years before Joshua arrives. Is this the proof of God? God destroyed the city in 1550, then sent Joshua there in 1400 BCE, as it would be an easy win because there was nothing there. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, when the walls came and tumbling down. You may talk about your kings of Gideon, talk about your men of Saul. But none like good old Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. That morning, Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho. When the walls came and tumbling down. Right up to the walls of Jericho, he marched with a spear in hand. Go blow that ram horn, Joshua cried, cause the battle is in my hand. Then the lamb ram sheep horn begins to blow, and the trumpets begin to sound. And Joshua commanded the children to shout. But there were no walls to come tumbling down. Joshua didn't fight the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua didn't fight the battle of Jericho, no walls came tumbling down. Cause there was no battle of Jericho, so there was no battle to fit. At the time Joshua was supposed to arrive, there was just a pile of shit. 
Just a minor pick through the rubble Found a squad or two But great walls tumbling down at the sound of a horn Is a story that just ain't true Joshua twiddled his thumbs at Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua twiddled his thumbs at Jericho. There was nothing else for him to do. However, later discoveries of pottery and Egyptian amulets with inscriptions underneath a three-foot layer of ash place the dramatic event at almost exactly the same time as the Bible does. Why is this surprising, or even proof of anything about God? If the history you are giving us is correct, and I have no reason to doubt it, the city was destroyed 150 years before Joshua arrives. Now the Israelites claim an empty city, and the newer pottery, dating to the time of Joshua, dates to when the Israelites arrived and claimed the city. Where is there a God in any of this? After this event, Jericho remained unoccupied for around 500 years. So whether you think that the Bible stories are fact or fiction, biographical or fantasy, thanks to archaeologists and science, we can say they are, at the very least, based on a true story. Okay, so he's saying the newer date on some of these artifacts means that Kathleen Kenyon got the date wrong on the destruction of the city at 1550 BCE, and it was really destroyed around 1400 BCE, because the city was then empty for the next 500 years. So any later artifacts had to have been in the city before it was destroyed, because no one could possibly be living there after that, just because it wasn't a big city? Joshua and crew couldn't have arrived and stayed in the empty city for a while because what? Reasons? He also gives no source for this claim. He says it's a recent discovery, so he might be referring to the work of Dr. Bryant Wood, biblical archaeologist, who puts the dates of the artifacts referred to here at 1400 BCE, or the time of Joshua. But Wood's colleagues disagree with his interpretation of the data, and even say that the radiocarbon dating of the pottery puts the dates at 1550 BCE, and thus Kenyon's dates for the destruction of Jericho remains the scholarly consensus. Or he could possibly be referring to the Italian-Palestinian expedition 1997 to 2015, where they did indeed find some artifacts similar to the ones described in the video. Lorenzo Nigro, the head of the Italian-Palestinian expedition, says, the city of Jericho was still occupied in the Late Bronze Age, although on a reduced scale. The burnt and collapsed defensive system was refurbished by adding a mud brick wall on top of the surviving crest of the Cyclopean Wall. The palace was scaled to a residency called the Middle Building. Thus, the artifacts mentioned in this video could in fact have dated to a later date, but if so, that isn't evidence that the city of Jericho still existed then, as Nigro says there is clear evidence of the destruction of the city by human means in about 1550 BCE, and that the city was occupied afterward, but not as the large city that it had once been. The author of this video wrongly claims that the city remained empty for 500 years and offers us no evidence to believe his claim. According to Israel Finkelstein, a leading figure in the archaeology and history of ancient Israel. Archaeology and the Bible do not line up. Part of the reason is because the story of Joshua wasn't written until the 7th century, and it was written from memories, legends, and stories. We cannot uh, speak about the rise of ancient Israel without mentioning the biblical narrative, right? Right, so it sounds like the issue has been solved long ago. You know, Albright, for example, uh, who gave his name to this place, um, it all fit for him, the conquest, the destructions at the end of the Late Bronze Age, the, uh, the arrival of Israelites, it all fit seamlessly together. Perfect. Great. Sounds perfect, because we have on one hand the description of the conquest of Canaan by Joshua, which means the replacement of the uh, old system uh, of city-states, uh, Canaanite city-states with the Israelites, uh, 
uh, in the land. The information comes from different angles and they all fit together. So why are we having this conversation? They don't fit. And they don't <laughs> fit because of uh, two reasons, uh, but well, many reasons. Some of them come from the Bible and some of them come from archaeology. So let me start very quickly with listing the problems that come from the biblical text. First and foremost, we know already that the Bible does not know about the late Bronze Age. The Bible has no recollection of this phase with Egypt ruling over Canaanite city-states. The Bible does not know about the crisis at the end of the Bronze Age, about the climate uh, crisis, the dry period at the end of the Bronze Age. So archaeology poses even more problematic issues. The first one is that many, very simple, as excavations continued after the early phase of Albright, it became crystal clear that many of the sites which are mentioned in the conquest narrative in the book of Joshua were not inhabited at all, did not exist in the late Bronze Age. But even if we were to grant everything claimed in this video, that Joshua defeated Jericho in 1400 BCE, and that this is confirmed by archaeology. How does this prove God? Where is there even evidence of God in this? After I was well into this project, I looked further into who made this video, Destination Tips. The intent is to suggest that this is a good place for a trip. Most people who go to Jericho go because of an interest in the Bible which is why I went in 2015, or an interest in history. It is a fascinating city from a biblical and secular historical perspective. The title was more clickbait than anything else, as the video doesn't even try to actually do what it claims, to prove that God exists. However, I stuck with the project for a couple of reasons. First, I had already written the lyrics for Joshua Twiddled His Thumbs at Jericho, and had asked Robin to record it for me. I didn't want to waste that effort. Second, the video has over a thousand views. Third, and most importantly, the comments to the video include this. I truly enjoyed this video. It's great to see people making videos like this that prove the existence of God and the Bible. Thank you. And this, God is real. If this is all it takes to prove God is real for you, that some guy with no stated credentials says that someone, and he doesn't even say who or when, found some artifacts in Jericho that date to around the time that the Bible says that, that Joshua conquered Jericho, then how real can your God be? If any evidence that anything in the Bible could possibly be true is proof to you that God is real, all you've demonstrated is that you believed God was real before you started. That's like saying that jackalopes are real because the skeleton of a rabbit was found near some antlers. Antlers near rabbits aren't proof that rabbits have antlers, any more than pottery dating to 1400 BCE in a city destroyed in 1550 BCE proves that a god did anything. Unless maybe he's claiming this god miraculously sent Joshua back in time to destroy the city in 1550. Or God miraculously sent Joshua to an empty city so he could claim his first victory and save Rahab the prostitute that was supposed to have let the Hebrew spies into the city and he saved her from boredom from the empty city? Who knows? Where there's supposed to be a god here is a mystery to me. The serious issue here is that for some religious people, anything is proof of what they want to believe. That way of thinking gets us to people believing that doctors are wrong about the pandemic, or that scientists are wrong about climate change, or about anything you read on the internet being trustworthy provided it affirms your faith. Putting together a video like this from Destination Tips is easy, when you don't cite sources, you just make popular claims with no dates, names, or facts, or anything to check. Proving you wrong becomes difficult to those of us who care about truth, as we need to dig deeper to find the actual authorities with the actual evidence that shows the scholarly analysis that disproves your claim. 
but it can be done. So I will keep doing it. And maybe, piece by piece, bit by bit, we can discard one false claim at a time. And until the crazy, unsubstantiated God claims stop, I won't be twiddling my thumbs either. Live your life. Joshua twiddled his thumbs at Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua twiddled his thumbs at Jericho. There was nothing else for him to do.